In this session, we're going to look at how we can use Civil 3D to assign materials to a solid model and then move that model into InfraWorks. This recording represents part three of a three-part series. As you can see, we're picking up right where we left off. If I zoom out and pan over, we can see that I have successfully converted about a third of my wireframe into solid geometry. So this is enough to look at how we can add materials to this model and then move the model over into InfraWorks. Let me zoom back in. Before I add materials, I am going to change my visual style. Let me open the visual style menu and I'll select realistic. This way, as I add materials to the drawing, I'll be able to see them right here in model space. I would also like to isolate the layer containing my solids. It's currently just one, the sketch layer. I'm going to do that by opening the layers panel. I'll click the isolate button and I'll select one of my solids and I'll press enter. To select materials, I'm going to type RMAT. This stands for Render Materials. It opens the Materials Browser. If this is the first time you've opened the browser, it probably looks similar to what I'm seeing on screen. Now, I prefer to use larger thumbnails with the browser. We can do that by opening this menu in the upper right corner. I'll come down and choose Thumbnail View. In fact, we can do it down here below. If I open this middle menu and choose Thumbnail, there we go. This gives us a much more visual approach to the palette. Up here at the top, we can see the materials that exist in the current drawing. Down below, we can see the materials that exist in the Autodesk library. If I expand Home here and then expand Autodesk library, you can see the various categories that we can search from. So it's a lot like we're going shopping for materials. I'm going to select a concrete material first. I'll do that by looking in the concrete category, and then I'll pull this slider down. Let's take a look at this one, Flat Broom Gray. To add this material to my drawing, I'm going to drag it up to the top of the palette and release. Once the material's in the drawing, I can drag it from the palette and drop it onto my geometry. Let's zoom in. Many times when you add a material, you may not like the scale of the texture. In this case, I'd like the scale to be a little smaller. Let me show you how you can edit this. If I come back to the palette, I can click this pencil on the material. This opens the Materials Editor. Very easy to change. All I have to do is click the image property. And in the texture editor, let me drag this down. I'm going to change the scale. You can see we can adjust the width and height. Currently, the proportional lock is turned on. I'm going to change the scale from 9 to 1, and I'll press Enter. Notice we can see that change happen immediately on screen. So you can dial up your materials to look exactly the way you like. When I'm finished, I'm going to close the editor, and I'll close the other editor. We'll zoom in, and we can see the difference. Let's zoom out and we'll pan this over. Just to have a little variety, let's make the rest of these objects look like they're painted white. To find a nice white material, I'm going to go up to the search area and type white. This will filter the drawing materials and the library materials for any texture or material containing the text string white. I'm going to further narrow my search by coming down to the finish category. Right here I've got a lacquer white material. Another way we can add materials to the drawing is by dragging them directly from the library and dropping them onto an object. This will also add them to the drawing. Let me come up and clear the search so we can see all of the materials in the file. I will then click on screen. Let's zoom in. Another way we can add materials is by selecting the objects first. I'm going to select the retaining walls and the stairs and then I'll come up and choose the material. At this point, I'm going to turn my selection cycling off so that doesn't get in the way. And I will select the remaining objects I'd like to add the white material to. The retaining walls, the stairs, and I'll come up and grab the material. There we go. Now that I'm finished adding materials to my file, I'm going to close the browser. And we'll look at how we can move this model into InfraWorks. First, we'll talk about coordinate system. I know this geometry is located at Florida State Plane Coordinates, NAD83 East Zone US Foot. Let's go to the Settings tab for a second. I'll right-click on the drawing name and choose Edit Drawing Settings. Notice that that coordinate system is not assigned to the file. It really doesn't have to be. I mean, I could add the coordinate system here if I want to, but it isn't until I drop the model into InfraWorks where I actually have to declare the coordinate system. So let me close this. Let's export the model. I'll do that by opening the application menu. I'll come down to export and then I'll choose FBX. I'm going to save this in a sample folder on my machine and I'll call this stairs.fbx and I'll save. I'd like to export selected entities. Let me click and I will select these. I'm going to be exporting the objects with the materials and I'd like the materials embedded. Let me click OK. Now that I've exported my model, let me put things back the way they were. I'm going to open the Layers panel, and I'll come down and choose Unisolate to turn my layers back on. I will then open the Visual Style menu and flip this back to Conceptual. Next, we'll jump over to InfraWorks. Here you can see I have a simple model that was created using Model Builder. To add the stairs, I'm going to bring up Windows Explorer. 
And in that sample folder, I'll grab my FBX file and drag and drop it into the model. Immediately, InfraWorks recognizes I'm adding content. All I have to do is tell InfraWorks what this content represents. Let me open the type menu and I'll choose City Furniture. Then I need to choose the coordinate system. Here's where I'll select the same coordinate system that I'm using in Civil 3D. I'll do that by clicking the globe. I'll come down to USA, Florida. And I'll choose Natty 3, Florida State Plain, East Zone, US Foot. When finished, I'll choose Close and Refresh. Finally, we'll close the Data Sources panel. We'll zoom in, and we can orbit around the model. So looking back to the first session, even if we only have 3D wireframe geometry, we can still leverage that content in InfraWorks. By using a few AutoCAD and Civil 3D surface modeling tools, we can quickly convert the wireframe to solid geometry. We can then add materials and take advantage of the coordinate system to drop the model perfectly into place inside of InfraWorks. Would you like to explore other Autodesk infrastructure ideas and workflows? If so, please visit the Civil Immersion blog by scanning the QR code or by following the URL listed below.